Good morning, little nerds. I'm Dr. Shereen Idris, a board-certified dermatologist, and welcome to my YouTube channel where every Saturday morning we have a Pillow Talk Derm together. The goal of these sessions is for me to help you help yourself. I am educating you to empower you to take control of your skin and your life in the process and to cut through the bullshit of the beauty industry and so that no cosmetic provider out there will ever take you for a ride. <laughs> That being said, if you guys have not subscribed to this channel, you don't know what you're missing out on, subscribe below, like this video, and let me know what you want to learn about more next week. We are going to cover today something that seems very simple and basic, but it's not so simple or basic at all. It is how to add hydration back into your skincare routine. Because the reason I felt this was important is that I've been seeing it more and more prominently throughout different advertisements. The beauty industry is leading you to believe that your skin type is the problem. You being dry or oily or having combination skin is not the problem. It is definitely something that you can help yourself with by either adding in hydrating products or taking out hydrating products, but that is not the problem that you are trying to tackle. When you are thinking of what the problem is, there are five main types of problems. And I say this based from experience of seeing hundreds of patients, if not thousands of patients a year. I've been practicing for over 10 years and I see patients five days a week. Number one is discoloration and hyperpigmentation that leads people to looking ruddy and looking tired. And they oftentimes don't even realize it, but the sun damage is done before you're even 20 and it starts to creep out in your late 20s, early 30s. Number two is acne and rosacea, flushing, breakouts, etc. Number three is wrinkles and fine lines and the breakdown of collagen that does start to appear in your early 30s and faster as you get older and wiser in life. Number four is the texture. Do you have scarring? Have you lost elasticity? And five is hormonal fluctuations that leads to increased dryness from within. This is not just postmenopausal, it's also post-pregnancy, it's also due to certain medications and like let's say you're going through chemo, etc. It can happen due to various different times in your life, but when it hits, ugh, it hits hard. So I'm going to focus this video very simply on hyperpigmentation because the visual of the major fade line is easy to understand. Full disclosure, these are my products. I made them, I love them. They target discoloration. Within these two products alone, you have over eight or nine different actives targeting discoloration, okay? This is not a basic serum. This is not a basic moisturizer. These deliver actives to help you get more even skin. But are they great for somebody with dry skin in a dry climate? Probably not. You probably need to layer in hydration. Are they great for somebody with dry skin in a humid climate? Probably yes, but you need to layer in hydration at a lighter level. And if you have oily skin in a humid climate, they might just be enough. And if you have oily skin in a dry climate, they might just be enough or you might need a little bit more. And today we're going to talk about how to layer in that hydration, starting with the lightest. And I'm going to keep these up to show you where you would put them in your routine. The lightest would be a hydrating mist. This is one by Evian. It's beautiful, but guess what? It's just water. Now, before you roll your eyes at me and your Frenchness goes, it's not just water, it is Evian. Yes, I know it is Evian. Evian has minerals in it and it helps to calm your skin. I personally am much more of a glycerin mist maker. This is a misting agent, I will link it below. I make just enough to last me the day, not too much because I'm not putting preservatives in, but I mix glycerin in with water, rose water, etc and I put it in this hydrating misting agent right here. I call it my little mister. And I use this throughout the day. This is much more powerful than the Evian if you are dry because it has a humectant in it, i.e. glycerin, that's gonna hold on to water. And you would use this before the serum and before the moisturizer in this order. So that is the first layer of hydration. The second layer of hydration comes in the form of essences or toners. Now, not all toners are created equal. Some toners have exfoliating acids in them. Some toners have hydrating properties in them. Take, for example, SK2. This is a beautiful hydrating toner. I do not waste it, though, and put it just in here. I put it in a spray bottle, and I spray it to get the biggest bang out of my buck. And it goes much, much longer in terms of mileage, i.e., in your routine. So this was a great one to add into your routine. And again, you would use it after the misting agent, 
before the serum, before the moisturizer. If you're very, very dry in a dry climate, you can use the misting agent, this, the serum, and the moisturizer. Now, after essences and toners, although before we're going to go fully into serums, this is kind of like a hybrid. This is the CosRx Advanced Snail Mucin Essence that they call, but I view this more like a serum. It's slightly thicker, it's not as watery, and I do see it more as a serum in my opinion, so I'm going to call it kind of an essence serum. But let's move on to hydrating serums. The Pillow Talk Derm Major Fiade Hyper Serum is not just a hydrating serum. Yes, it hydrates because it is glycerin based and it has that humectant in it. But if you feel you want a basic hydrating serum, you can use one before the Hyper Serum. For example, Coco Kind has their Ceramide Serum for 21 bucks, which has five different ceramides in them. Ceramides are essential to helping restore the brick and mortar functionality of your skin. The bricks being your skin cells, the mortar being the fat between the skin cells. So ceramides allows that to be restored so that your skin barrier can be much more cohesive and happy. It's very nice, it's lightweight, it's HA free. Bioma also has their hydrating serum over here with triceramide complex squalane and glycerin for 19 bucks. Avino has their common restore triple oat serum that I love. Somebody from the UK uh, copied me on a DM a week or so ago showing me that it now comes in a pump bottle. We are not so lucky in the US. We still have it in a dropper. So those are hydrating serums that you can add to your routine. So you, now we have our misting spray our essences and toners, our hydrating serum, the hyper serum, the active seal. Notice the hyper serum and the active seal are still targeting our problem, which is discoloration, but we're layering in hydrating products. Now, after the hyper serum, we have our active seal. The reason why I called it active seal is because it's an active sealant to the trio of the major fade line. It is a glycerin-based moisturizer, with a vitamin C ester among other ingredients in it. But it is not necessarily the most hydrating basic moisturizer if you have dry skin. So after you've used the serum and the moisturizer, you can layer in extra moisture. And this is where it gets interesting if you're very dry or very dry in a dry climate, okay? Starting with Avino Calm and Restore, their Oat Gel Moisturizer. This is the lightest one that I'm going to start with. Extremely lightweight. And it was actually a benchmark in terms of texture when I was creating the Active Seal. I wanted something lightweight to live on your skin. Apparently, Perito has come out with a knockoff to it. It is their Oat in Intense Cream. It is slightly thicker than I would say Ooh, this guy. If you guys look at this one, this is the Avino and this is the Perito. It's slightly thicker, but yes, it does have that nice hydrating quality to it. And it does feel like the active seal feels, okay? It's nice, it's silky, it's smooth. This is the, both of these are the lightest weight moisturizers that you can add after the active seal. And I say after the active seal because I would rather you put the active seal first in order to get the benefits of targeting discoloration. Remember, we're just adding hydration in. So after that, we can go thicker. Jordan Samuel has his Moisture Recovery Cream for $37, which is a really nice, rich shea butter cream. But look how nice and thick this is. She doesn't want to leave my skin, okay? Um, so thick. Look at this. 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 It's beautiful and it has squalene, glycerin, and ceramides in it. And it is nice to kind of seal everything in after the active seal. We have Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. This one is also equally thick, okay? This is $38. It has glacial glycoproteins, which is supposedly going to help restore your skin barrier, as well as squalene and glycerin in it and she's very beautifully smooth and nice. It is slightly slippier, I would say, than the Jordan Samuel, which is a little tackier, but beautiful nonetheless. 
And then Lush Pose's Cicaplast Boom B5. This is one with zinc. I'm going to be lisping a lot, but this is a hydrating moisturizer with zinc in it. So if you are somebody who has discoloration and you want to use, for example, these two products to target that, but you have an inflamed barrier or you're a little bit red and irritated because it's so dry outside and you're dry and the air is dry, etc. Nice option to use because of the zinc to help to calm any irritation. It's also very thick. I would tell you, however, I like to use this at night. I wouldn't use the La Roche-Posay B5 during the day after the active seal because it might be too white or opaque and it might be just too much on your skin unless, again, you are in Utah. And then last, we have our occlusives. What are really going to help seal everything in and exert almost like a physical barrier-like quality on our skin to really seal the deal and allow the moisture to stay in. The number one is Vaseline. You can literally put this after the active, the hyper serum and the active seal, you can layer a layer of Vaseline on top. Um, a lot of people find that disturbing. A lot of people were really into it when slugging was a huge trend. I would do it in the winter. The other one I would use in the winter. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm gonna fall. I almost fell. Is Waleda Skin Food on top of my face. Those were all great. But the best of the best, if you are really dry in a very dry climate, or if you have lost moisture in your skin, because now you're postmenopausal or in the postpartum phase where your hormones are dropping or you're even going through chemo. Or if you have an inflamed skin barrier in addition to discoloration and now you're just like red and parched and tracked. And Say hello to your kids diaper paste. Triple paste cream. This is literally white petrolatum, which is Vaseline. plus zinc oxide, which is amazing at having reparative and healing properties. So after I do the hyper serum and the active seal, and if I feel the need to add an extra layer of hydration in, I then end it with the diaper paste, okay? Because this is really going to seal it all in while calming your face. Unlike the La Roche-Posay, which doesn't have that occlusive property to it, this has an occlusive property to it. Plus it's using zinc oxide and not zinc PCA. Zinc oxide is much better geared towards repairing and regenerating your skin. So this is like the last thing that you would put on your face and no joke, you will literally look like a buttercream cupcake. Now, I did a video not too long ago about you know face basting and I put a lot of this on, you really just need just enough for your face to look like a ghost. If you wanna put more on, knock yourself out. But when I tell you this is gonna be the best thing that seals the deal in and holds on to hydration, try it out and let me know afterwards how it goes. From my experience with babies, Triple Paste, and I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, is the best one. Not the Desitin, not the Butt Paste, the Triple Paste. This was the best one at healing my kids' bums, and it's the best one that has helped my face throughout the winter and the cold air. Love it, love it, love it. So there you have it. And I hope the visual below has been helpful in following along when it comes to misting agents and essences and toners, to hydrating serums, to hydrating moisturizers, to occlusives. But none of these products are actively targeting your problem. Remember, your problem is either discoloration, acne rosacea, fine lines, wrinkles, texture elasticity, or hormonal fluctuations. And obviously, there are more problems than just that, but I was trying to keep it simple by using just two products as a good visual, two products that are actively targeting a problem as a good visual, in order for you guys to understand how to layer in hydration at different steps in your routine. So hopefully now, if you're dry in a dry climate, you can still tackle your problem, but know how to hydrate below. And if you are oily in a dry climate and you need to add a little bit more, 
go for something more lightweight. If you are oily in a humid environment, you probably don't need anything. If you're dry in a humid environment, you can probably add a light mist and even a light serum. And if you're dry in a dry climate, you probably want to add all of the below. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful. I am very, very grateful for each and every single one of you for helping empower me throughout my own journey and finding my voice and finding my confidence. And I hope I can help empower you in this journey in finding your confidence in your skin. I wish you a beautiful Saturday morning and I will see you guys next week.